Have you ever seen a guppy or other live bear just slowly waste away and you have no idea why? Keep watching as I share the story of how I saved my Endler's live bears from death using a miracle dewormer called Labamisol, which is good against skinny disease, wasting disease, um, live bear disease, and camelanus redworms. Hi, I'm Irene with Girl Talks Fish here with practical tips on nanofish and planted aquariums. And last year I decided I wanted to try breeding Endler's live bears. Unfortunately, the Petco and local fish store around me only had males for some reason. So I went ahead and came home with a group of green laser Endlers. So cute and colorful. I love that little curious personality of theirs. So they spent about five weeks in quarantine and I did um, dose the quarantine med trio, which I'll link down below. And everything seemed fine, except for some reason, like two of them went missing. And I figured they probably jumped out. So I put a tighter lid on the aquarium and that was that. Eventually I added them into my main display tank. And then two months later, I went on vacation. When I came back, there was one dead endler. And then slowly I started seeing that one by one, there would always be a sickly endler that would be kind of resting on the plant leaves while the rest of his brothers were happily chasing each other around, acting as, all, as if all were normal. I don't know, should I add like more salt to the tank? I can't because it had live aquarium plants in it. Um, maybe some wonder shell for more minerals. I couldn't find any of the bodies too. They would always disappear, but eventually I found one and it was like, it had slightly pink gills and a swollen belly. So after looking through my available medications, I came across API Journal Cure, which does treat gill flukes and a swollen abdomen. And the active ingredients are metronidazole, which is an antiparasitic drug, and prosequantil, which is a dewormer. So five days after treatment, the current sickly endler looked like he was doing better. Like he was still kind of grayish pale, but at least he wasn't resting on the plant leaves. One month later, I had another dead fish on my hands as well as another sickly endler, despite a second treatment of general cure. So it was time to try another medication. Thankfully, Greg Sage from SelectAquatics.com has another dewormer called Labamisol, which is primarily used to treat Camelanus worm, which you can easily diagnose if you see like a little red worm poking out of the anus of your fish. It can also treat this mysterious live bear disease, which is sometimes called, you know, skinny disease or wasting disease. And apparently it's caused by a tiny microscopic external parasite, um, invisible to the naked eye, which is why I couldn't see any symptoms. Um, but one of the primary symptoms is a dramatic thinning of the fish despite it eating food. Levamisol is a dewormer commonly used in livestock and now in the aquarium hobby for treating nematodes and roundworms. So some symptoms you may see of those worms include white or translucent stringy feces, the little red worm poking out of the fish's anus that I mentioned before, wasting away, a bloated abdomen, or even cysts. The medication works by being rapidly absorbed into the fish's gut, and then it breaks down pretty easily in about three days supposedly. It works by paralyzing the adults, but it doesn't affect the eggs, so you are gonna have to redose in about two to three weeks after the first treatment. It is safe for beneficial bacteria, plants, invertebrates, and any uninfected fish. And then final tip is to store in a dark, dry, and room temperature location. How to use Levamisol. So first of all, buy some Levamisol from a reputable seller. Obviously I recommend selectaquatics.com, link down below. And don't forget to get the measuring spoon. It's gonna make dosing so much easier. Go ahead and turn off any UV sterilizer that you have, remove any chemical filtration, and then do a 25% water change before you start treatment. Dose the Levamisol according to the instructions and then wait 24 hours. Now, Levamisol is light sensitive, but Greg says he doesn't do any kind of blackout or even turn off the aquarium lights because the medication works so fast. However, just in case, I went ahead and turned off my aquarium lights. The next day, change another 25% water and then dose Levamisol again. Leave that Levamisol in for another 24 hours, and then you can go ahead and just slowly remove the medication using your normal water change schedule. Because Levamisol degrades so quickly, there's no problems with leaving it in the water. 
My Endler didn't show any signs of improvement during the two-day levamisole treatment, so Greg suggested adding a medicinal dose of salt. So what that is, is start with half a tablespoon of aquarium salt per five gallons of water, wait 24 hours. If there's no sign of improvement, add another half tablespoon of aquarium salt per five gallons of water. And so by day four of, uh, since I added the first treatment of levamisole, my Endler actually started improving and was no longer resting on any plant leaves. Two weeks after the initial treatment of levamisole, you need to redose the whole treatment again to kill off any new worms that came from unhatched eggs. So in my case, I totally like clockwork, notice that one of my Endlers two weeks later was resting on plant leaves again. Don't. So let's do this all over again. Remove your chemical filtration and UV sterilizer. Do a 25% water change, dose levamisole, wait 24 hours, do another 25% water change, dose levamisole again, wait 24 hours, and then gradually remove the medication using your normal water change schedule. Now, if you still see symptoms, go ahead and wait another two weeks and then do a third treatment of levamisole. One thing to remember is that your fish may be too far gone to save, but just don't forget you are saving the lives of any healthier take mates it has that might be affected. Thankfully, in my case, all of my endlers survived the treatment. I couldn't have done it without you, Greg Sage. I just wish I had tried Levamisol sooner. So I would say the two takeaways from this experience are, one, if you have any fish that are missing, not just sick, while in quarantine, Start that quarantine clock all over again. Don't risk it. Don't add any fish into your main tank. Make sure everybody is completely happy and healthy before you move them over. Number two, if your fish is wasting away or getting really skinny and you don't know why, there are two dewormers you can try. Praziquantil is commonly found in Prazipro, Paracleanse, General Cure, and that primarily treats tapeworms and flukes versus Levamisole is used for roundworms and nematodes. So if one dewormer doesn't work, try the other one. Don't give up. If you're interested in more videos about fish diseases, comment down below to let me know what you want me to cover and I'll do my best. Take time to enjoy your aquariums and I'll see you in the next video.